You can perform sorting and grouping options within the report, but first of all I need to create a report. I'm going to be basing it upon this book sales table. When I open it up, you can see the fields I'll be pulling in will include the order ID, sales date, customer ID, and the book sold. Close out of it. Now to create the report, I'm going to come up here, click on the Create tab, go to the Reports group, and this time use the Report Wizard. Now when I use a wizard in Microsoft, it's going to ask me a bunch of questions. I give it the answers, and based upon those answers, and in this case, it'll design a report for me. So I click on the report wizard, and then notice here by default it pulls in the book sales table for me. The reason why is because previously, before I started the report wizard, I had it selected over here in the navigation pane. So I don't have to click on the drop down arrow and select it again. Leave it as book sales. I'm going to click on the All button so I can see all the fields within the report except part number. Double click on that, dump it back, click Next. Do I want to do any grouping? Well, if I look at this and figure it out, the order ID, the transaction date, and the book sold, it's all by customer. I want to be able to group it by the customer name or in this case the customer ID because if I don't, for every transaction date that a customer has made, like let's say they purchased 20 books throughout the year, I'll have the customer ID listed 20 times. I don't want to do that. So if I double click on the customer ID over here, it adds it and says it's going to group it by customer ID, meaning that it'll list the customer ID once and then group all the transaction dates or all the orders underneath that one ID here, which makes it nice. If I made the mistake, I can just double click to remove it, but of course I do want it, so I'll double click to add it back. Click Next. Within the group, do I want to be able to sort any of the fields? Order by transaction date, ascending or descending. I'm fine, so I'll select None, click Next, and then as far as layout goes over in, in the preview pane here, you can see it's got the upper level group, the subgroup to the group, and then the sub-sub, and then the details here, more of a diagonal in the report versus block, where it actually blocks it at the end, the details, and then the outline. Keeps it blocked at the end, gives a little bit more formatting here, still at a diagonal. I'm going to go back to Step, click Next. And then as far as the colors go, with the layouts, pick what colors you want. I'm going to stay with Opulent, click Next. And then at the end, it says it's going to be the name of the report. The default is the table book sales. Well, I don't want it TBL. I want it to delete the three-letter prefix and call it RPT. Now, as you recall in the Access Level 1 training video, the reason why we gave it the prefix is because when we're designing something in the design view of the report or a form, it's hard to tell where we're pulling the data from or it's based upon. Like if I have book sales listed three times without the prefix that it's an RPT report or a TBL a book sales table or a QSelect book sales query and so on. When I'm finished, go ahead and click finish. It opens up in the print preview. How do I know? Because up here it gives me the close print preview button. So I can click on it to zoom out to get a distant look at the report. Click on it to zoom in. In fact, how many pages does it have? I can click on the next page. It has two, three pages. I'm going to click on go to the first page and then click on to zoom out, then click up at the top to zoom in. Next, if I want to be able to filter records out of this report, like for example, let's say that we offered discounts for anybody who purchased or made a transaction on the date of August 30th, 2008. And let's say the boss wants to see the report, but not to include those uh, discount dates. So to remove this, I want to be able to close out of the print preview. And I can do this in the design view, which it defaulted me to here, or the layout view. And I can just right click on the tab here and go to layout view. And again, I want to do it by transaction date, so I'll click on one of the fields here and it selects the whole column of fields in the transaction date or sales date column. And I can filter it one of two ways. I can either right click on one of the fields here and then go down to the date filters and do it next month, this month, last month, yesterday, today, um, if it equals a certain date. So for example, the default was July 20th, so I only want to see those that equal a certain date, but instead, I'm going to come up here, click on the Home tab and go to the Sort and Filter group and click on the Filter button then it has all the dates here and I wanted to get rid of the uh, discount dates which is August 30th and then if there are any other discount dates that we don't want to show in the report where clients purchased and got some discounts once I'm finished on checking those I can click OK and then when I do watch what happens it gets rid of just the transaction date it doesn't get rid of the customer ID unless that's all they had was the transaction date here of August 30th but he has two more so I click OK August 30th for customer ID 31, 20, and 1 is disappeared, is gone, is filtered out. Of course, I do have my toggle filter button that I can click on it to toggle back to where it was previously, where I had all the records, and then click on it again to filter back, getting rid of August 30th and the other transaction dates. And then, of course, to get rid of this toggling button, you can click on the advanced drop-down button and click on clear all filters. And I'm back to square one. 
Next, if I want to be able to calculate or sum up a field here, in this case the uh, book sold, it's really simple. I can do it in the design view or the layout view. Again, the design view does everything the layout view does, but more. First of all, let's do it in the layout view, and then I'll show you the design view. In the layout view, I just need to click on one of the fields here, then come up here, click on the contextual related tab, the format tab, to the layout view, and then go to the grouping and totals group and click on the group, and click on the totals drop down arrow, and we want to sum up the books by group. And the cool thing is, is not only does it sum up by group, let me click off in the margin here, but it'll give me a grand total of all of them down at the bottom of the report. But first of all, here are the numbers for this group here, the customer ID, a total of 56 books. Now, if it takes you a while and you don't see the numbers pull up, it may be because you have a huge report and Access has got to calculate it. And it may be a little bit slow, so you may have to wait for your totals to appear. And then, of course, all the way down to the bottom here is my grand total for all the books within my report here. Group by customer ID. Now, if I go ahead and hit the undo button here and get rid of it, let me show you how to do it in the design view. Right click, go to the design view. And on the design tab, there's the totals. Well, in the group and totals group, there's the totals. The reason why I can't click on it because I need to first select a text box that I want to be able to get the totals from. Remember, it's the book sold here, so the book sold text box, not the label. The actual text box or the field that pulls in the records, the quantities from the uh, book sales table. After I select it, then I can come up here to the grouping and totals group, and there it gives me the totals. Click on sum, and it does two things. Now, as you recall, the report here is grouped by the customer's ID. So there's the header. And then down below, it added the customer ID footer because at the end of each group here by customer ID, it's going to give me the total sum based upon the field here that I had selected, which equals sum the book sold. So I get the total sum based upon the group, which is grouped by customer ID in the header here. And then it gives me in the report footer at the end of the report, the grand total for all the group totals here. So click on the view button to go through the report view. And then there's all the totals. Notice how it just kind of slowly pulls up here. See when I quickly zip down below. Give it a second, then it pulls up. Yeah, you want to be patient with that. And then finally down at the bottom, the grand total. Now, what if you run into a report that was made and was given to you and says, um, I want you to group this report. Instead of going back through and trying to figure out what tables a report was based upon or what query and recreate the whole report again, because in the wizard, it gave you the option to group it. You can, well, let me close out of this report and click yes to save it. Let me give you an example here, my book project report. You see here, the book project report isn't grouped. I mean, it appears to be grouped, or it looks like it's sorted alphabetically from the B's down to the G's, L's, down to the Z's. But if you're given a report, you want to be able to group it all together under maybe one book title. So it's just listed once, not listed several times. So we have one book title listed, it's grouped, and then just all the customer names under that one group. Then this is what you want to do. We can do this from the layout or the design. Let's go to the layout view, right click, and go to layout. It doesn't matter what I have selected when it comes to doing my grouping here, but come up here on the Format tab to the Grouping and Totals group and click on the Group Sort button. Down below, if it was previously sorted or grouped, this report, it would have a line item here, and it doesn't. There's nothing here. So I can start from scratch. I can say I want to be able to add a group, and when I click on it, it says, OK, from all the fields here, which one do you want to group? And I want to group it by book title. I only want the book title listed once and group all the customers underneath that one book title. I don't want it repeated several times, so I'll select book title. The moment I select it, well, there we go. And look at that. It appeared to be sorted when we opened it up ascendingly, but actually, America's Haunted, the letter A, um, was in the report somewhere, probably towards the bottom. So, great. Now, the next thing I want to do is, do I want to be able to sort this by book title? Well, by default, after I grouped it, it, it is sorting it. It starts with the numbers, and then A's to B's, and you can see, boy, we go on forever here. Looks like we just had basic medical billing. In any case, if I want to be able to sort it, like let's say by customer name within the groups, because right now it goes from F to G, and then it goes to R, and then back up to G, just come down here, click on the Add Sort, and notice the Add Sort is going to be sub to within the group here. So after it groups within that group, I want to be able to sort it by the customer name. Click on it, and there we go. Now it has it sorted nicely, F to the G's, down to the R's, then if there was any, finally, Z's here. And then we can go ahead and right click this and go to the report view and looks nice. Oh, there we go. In the report view, again, in the previous report, when I was scrolling down, it takes a while for this to update. So when I scrolled through this really fast, it looked like that there was nothing more than just basic medical billing. But there was. I just had to slow down and wait for the fields to populate here. Now, the report view doesn't tell me how many pages are going to print off. The only way I can know that is if I change it to the print preview and then of course down below 
I'm able to see if how many pages I need to toggle through and those are how many pages that, that are going to print off total of three then right click back to the either the layout view or the design view and you can see it's down below here the group sort and total pane and I can close out of that if I want to bring it back up in the design view or the layout view just come up here to the grouping and totals group click on group sort it brings it back up and you can see it's by book title grouped and then within that group it wants to sort by the customer name if I want to get rid of one of these just select the line item and and then click over here on the delete button and then over here and delete the group there now if I delete the group it added it its own section here the book title header section it's going to delete not only the header section but the controls within that section so maybe I want to take the controls out and put it in the detail before I delete that header section so it's not a good idea but if I go ahead and say yes see the book title is totally gone from my report it would have been wise before I deleted that to actually cut the control out of the group header section put it in the details section because when I view my report now I don't have the book titles at all so keep that in mind when you decide to delete a group if it gives you that warning fix up your report pull it out of that group header section so when it's deleted you don't delete the actual field with it and if so then just go back to the design view of course and then come up here click on your add existing fields you don't want to view all the fields you just only want to show the fields that this report is tied to so you click on the link down below show only fields in the current record source and then of course I can add my book title here put it in the details section double click the book title select the label here cut it put it up here in the page header section paste it and then click and drag my book title up here then one final thing is that if these things are grouped together or they're stacked together like they are here and I can't move them over it is a group you probably can't see it here let me delete the label there but when I click on it see how it selects it here it selects not only the label but the text box and then if I shift click all these others they're all grouped well to be able to move them here what I want to do is after I shift click them all is to be able to ungroup them coming back to the range tab in the other training video when we talked about your control groups you can make them tabular or stacked well what I want to do is remove those groups so it breaks them all off so then I can go ahead shift click all these and either move them individually or again shift click them and it allows me to actually move them where when they were stacked it was controlled so it was I wasn't able to move them here and then I can go ahead and put my book title in this case I got rid of my label so I can just delete that and start over double click book title cut my label come up here paste it so my book title labels there and then click and drag its corresponding text box down below and then right click and go to the report view well it's not aligned perfectly but you see what I was trying to do I'm a mash unit trying to just quickly get it up of course I want to put it in bold I want to line it a little bit better and then I can go back to grouping and so on thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel get notified of the latest videos and for only two dollars a month you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos